Hi, I'm Natalie Zen from Zen Dialogue. Welcome to Making Data Collection Meaningful, a self-paced course offered by the Spirit Change Program. This is module three on community-led data collection, which is part of community-led monitoring, evaluation, and learning, also known as COLMEL. And that is a practice where the community designs their own evaluation with our help not only responding to or participating in a monitoring or evaluation exercise designed by us. And so the goal is actually to support the community in defining their goals and activities, actions they want to undertake in that direction, and then monitoring and or evaluating their progress toward that desired uh, future. And so it's about supporting a data-driven and evaluatory mindset. And it's something that Salenga is really passionate about and believes in and is wanting to promote more use of. And so is working on compiling more resources and guides. And so I want to acknowledge Salenga for a lot of the experience and wisdom that went into this module. And so what is the difference between a community-led approach and a participatory approach writ large? And this is Salanga's definition. There are gonna be different takes on these terms, but basically it can be summarized by the question, whose agenda is it? So in the community-led approach, it's really the community that defines the agenda. So they're the one articulating their own goals, the change that they would like to see, their theory around how that change can be achieved and then they identify strategies and actions that they can undertake to facilitate change in that direction and then the monitoring and evaluation is around progress toward those results that they have defined so they're monitoring and evaluating based on their own agenda whereas in a participatory approach the monitoring and evaluation is of an agenda defined by the project and the community members may be engaged in one or more elements of the project cycle from project design um, but particularly data collection and maybe uh, sense making around the project results and how to move forward so you can see that Colmel would be an investment into the community because it's, it's supporting them in defining where they want to go and in getting there and being able to track the extent to which they're moving toward their desired future. And so those skills and capacities remain and, and the behaviors that have been um, shifted will remain beyond the time frame and the scope of the project. There's kind of built-in sustainability there, right? So why integrate Colmel into your project? And it's worth just clarifying that this would be part of a larger monitoring and evaluation strategy. Um, it doesn't necessarily replace the monitoring and evaluation, but why integrate that? And one reason is that it really speaks to the heart of Canada's feminist international assistance policy which encourages community-led development. And so community-led monitoring and evaluation is an important part of that and, and would support moving in that direction. Another reason is that community-led monitoring and evaluation can really enhance the monitoring and evaluation and yield um, data that wouldn't be accessible otherwise. I want to clarify that when we talk about community, it doesn't actually mean a village per se. Really what we're talking about is the um, motivated individuals who are interested in addressing the issue at hand, and particularly the people who are affected directly by that issue. So if you think about the case study and also the story I'm about to tell related to teenage pregnancies, um, a village might contain a number of community groups that would engage in the coal mill process. Adolescent girls, adolescent boys, parents and caregivers, uh, just to name a few. And community-led monitoring and evaluation would aim to give voice to those different groups in the community 
and to bridge the differences and support them in working together. So I'd like to illustrate what this could look like by telling a story um, of, you know, of community-led Mel, and it's based on a real story. So imagine that there's a country of a thousand hills. Let's call it Rwanda. And you may know this country. And in this country, there's a village. And in that village live a lot of people. And in the country, uh, sorry, in that village, there is a community health worker. And we recognize them through the st stethoscope that they wear. And this community health worker meets with pregnant women and offers prenatal uh, consultations and screenings. And on this particular day, of all of the pregnant women that they meet, fully 60% of them are adolescents. That's a pretty alarming figure. And as they usually do, at the end of the day, they send data back through their smartphone by SMS to the Ministry of Health. And so they report back on this alarming figure. And the Ministry of Health receives that information. And because this is Rwanda and things work pretty well and are pretty well organized, the government is able to respond quite quickly and reassesses its policy and its interventions. And uh, within, yeah, that short period of time of six months, they mount a response. And in this case, let's say it's in the form of distribution of contraceptives. So here's our condom. And now imagine into this picture comes a project. That'll be represented by our project worker here. And the project stimulates the creation of youth clubs. So here we've got our youth. And, and they are involved in uh, the young men and women come together. They discuss the issue of teenage pregnancies and they build awareness. They access resources, and they also um, they're also mobilized to take their own actions and to develop their own action plan. And they get even perhaps a little bit of money in the form of small action grants to support that plan. And so they engage in monitoring of the teenage pregnancies, provision of youth friendly services, and so. This is monitoring, community-led monitoring and evaluation, a certain level of it. But the project goes beyond this. And imagine that they also stimulate, in addition to the creation of the youth clubs, the creation of a community working group. And that working group includes a number of actors. So it includes your youth, boys and girls from the youth clubs. And it also includes your community health worker, key player. It also includes the community leader and a representative of the teachers and parents and caregivers, both female and male, mothers and fathers. And their sole purpose is to look at this issue and address the issue of teenage pregnancy. And so they meet regularly, they review the results of data from the community and from the health worker, and they discuss a coordinated plan, taking into account what the youth can address themselves and also what support they need from the rest of the community. 
And these different actors are supported, trained, mobilized to look for solutions with their peers in their own sphere of influence. And so they're, they're regularly coming together to do that monitoring and evaluation and to act on the results. So there's an example um, from a real project of what this kind of community-led approach can look like. So what does a process like that involve? First, you need to budget for it. You need to assess whether uh, it's a suitable approach for the context. And then there's community capacity building uh, for the community then to go and develop its action plan and indicators. Then there's training on the actual data gathering and collection and analysis. Then the community to, uh, designs its own data collection tools and then goes out and gathers the data that already exists. So in this case, it could be from that community health worker, the health clinics, uh, from the Ministry of Health. It might also be through the Ministry of Education and the school system. And then they also need to gather whatever data is missing. So in this case, it might be from the adolescent girls and boys, from the community at large, from the parents uh, and, and the school system and so on. Then they need to analyze and disseminate the results that they get within the community and figure out you know, how to use them and move forward with them. And then there's a process of aggregating the results at the project level. So. Um, this, this can be a bit of a challenge because the communities will have defined possibly different goals, activities, indicators. Uh, they might be monitoring different, yeah, different kinds of strategies. But there is the possibility of assigning a numerical scale and being able to aggregate that way. And you might remember an example that I gave along those lines in module two. And so, it's important to underline that this approach, um, it's not necessarily the right fit for all contexts. And there are some considerations you need to keep in mind when deciding whether or not to integrate this into your programming. One is that it really requires some flexibility in your project design and tools because each community um, is defining their own approach and methods and tools. It also requires flexibility in funding because the community is identifying its own priorities and activities and strategies. And those might end up lying outside of the focus that was planned for the project, but still contributing to the project outcome. So there might be a, a need to um, revise or adapt some of the initial project vision or to have a you know, large enough project vision that it can uh, encompass those differences. It also requires some flexibility in time because uh, you need at least six to eight months at the outset to do an in-depth assessment by the project team at the community level of aspects like gender, governance, human rights, environment. Um, and also you need time to mobilize the community and build their capacity to engage in this way. There is a risk of leaving someone behind. On one hand, a community-led program can really fully engage those most marginalized, so there's a real opportunity, but the, the design needs to be really sound and appropriate to the context for that to, to fully um, you know, bear out. There's also a risk of unpredictable or uneven data quality because we're not sure of the capacity of the community. They're driving their own sampling. Uh, they're designing their own data collection tools and process. So um, when it comes to aggregating that data, that could be a bit of a challenge. And just to reiterate, it really requires significant resources at the outset for that assessment and for mobilizing and building the capacity of the community. And that, mean, that means you need staff, you need funds, you might need a conversation with your donor to ensure that you have that at the outset. And so it's not necessarily the right approach um, for all cases. 